PRINCE is an acronym. It stands for Projects in Controlled Environments. You, like I, may wonder if an organisation is a controlled environment. You, like I, may know that conventional controls in service organisations send them out of control, but more of that another time. PRINCE started life in 1975 as PROMPT, a project management approach developed by an IT company called Simpact Systems, and it caught the attention of the government's Central Computer and Telecommunications Agency. And in 1979 they took it on and called it PRINCE. A review by users led to the new version, PRINCE 2, in 1996. And by the year 2010, the work of the Central Computer and Telecommunications Agency had been moved to the Office of Government Commerce, the OGC. And it's the OGC that encourages, indeed insists on, the use of PRINCE2 today. Now you may think this is the boring bit, and it is. But with everything that comes along, we have to ask, who invented this, and what problems were they trying to solve? And the answer to the latter question is implementing IT solutions. Back in 1975, someone was trying to solve the problem of getting large-scale IT-driven changes to work. Now, unless you've been asleep for the last 20 years, you'll have noticed that government doesn't get any better at IT-dominated change. Failures and cost overruns are, quite simply, astonishing. Ministers always say, oh, this time it's going to be better because we're going to employ better project management. And then the next big failure comes along. And what do they do? They just repeat this mantra. Despite no improvements in IT-dominated change, PRINCE2 is now argued to be the world-class means for project management for all types of project. But does PRINCE2 work? Well, this is PRINCE2's view of the world. Any change requires a business justification, a defined structure for your project team, a sound plan of what's going to be done, and the plan has to be divided into manageable and controllable stages with flexibility that can be applied at the right level. Sounds fantastic. Well, until you understand most of this is going to create a management factory, but more on that later. The first time I came across this phenomenon was in the mid-1980s when I arrived in Ireland to meet a German called Eddie Richter. Eddie Richter was working for Digital Equipment Corporation and it was his job to run a project to completely redesign the way digital provided services to desktop computer users worldwide. I'd been sent to meet Eddie because we'd just helped digital redesign their enterprise software service. Enterprise means they deal with big machines. And people thought maybe Vanguard could help Eddie with his desktop problem. Eddie showed me what they've been doing. For the previous three weeks, people from all over the world have been holed up in a Dublin hotel, working on defining and planning the whole project. The business justification was the growing market and the need to develop a low-cost, high-quality service. Every member of the project team knew exactly where they sat in the project structure and they had a detailed breakdown of tasks to be done. They had work done on the as-is, and they'd done work on the to-be, and they had detailed steps and timelines planned for everything. And then they had interdependencies of all the various activities, which were defined and mapped. The results of this three-week frenzy of project management activity covered two large walls of a ballroom. It was an awesome, detailed description of everything everybody had thought about. Well, I just looked at Eddie and said, well, it's a bit like the Irish navigation joke. If that's where you want to go, if I were you, I wouldn't start here. Eddie, to his credit, asked where we should start. And I said we'd simply study it and then redesign it. He gave us the Irish desktop service to do exactly that. And in two months, we had a redesign that was delivering incredible customer service at much lower costs. The customers were delighted. But it gave Eddie Richter a headache. Here was a powerful solution. It was working. But how does he map that onto the project plan? 
And what does he do with all that good work going on in designing future states and delivering the deliverables and keeping to the plan and escalating the problems and managing everything with the reports and risk assessments and regular reviews? Eddie's worldwide project for redesigning desktop services was green on the RAG status. The right answer would have been for Eddie to abandon his plan, but that's not the way to get on. PRINCE2 was an attempt to improve the way we implement large-scale IT. In that, it has failed. PRINCE2 is now considered best practice for all change programs. As with IT-dominated change programs, it will lead to plenty of activity, but little understanding, and hence, plenty of failure. Change should start with get knowledge. PRINCE2 provides no help in that. As an intervention, PRINCE2 puts an organisation on a long journey, one that's difficult to stop, because delivering against the plan becomes the be-all and end-all. Effective change is emergent. You don't need a plan. You need a set of principles that help you understand and design for improvement. This prince, like the king, has no clothes.